26 for the TTI. Oh gosh, no. Uh, I think that's that's prob that's probably our all time record for. Uh, I I think so. I've never seen that many people. I was I was talking with somebody the other day, and they were telling me that, I guess it was Bill Kelly was on a, a conference call last week and it was like pushing a hundred thousand people on this conference call or something like that. It was um, uh, an Anthony Robbins type of event that he was on with. I can't imagine how small those squares were. There'd, there'd be there'd be set, there'd be thousands of people just inside one of these squares. All righty. Well, I see that we're on. I'm going to just make sure that I kill my uh, my mail here, just so we don't get any kind of odd dings. So the subject matter for today is a, is allegedly bundling, and I'll just wait for Nancy to come on. So the, the subject today is bundling. It may be easier to almost thinking about it, and I was going to say this even without Nancy's presence, to think of it in terms of tailoring. <laughs> um, and, and I do that on a couple of different levels. Some of you have heard me talk about this before. Um, but uh, many, many years ago, I tried to eliminate the word customizing from my vocabulary. Uh, and part of that is because to me, whenever somebody tells me that they're going to give me a custom process or a custom anything, the first re the fir my, my mind immediately goes to high cost. My second thing goes to, oh, so you're going to invent something for me that's never been tried before. And therefore, whether I want to be or not, I'm going to be the guinea pig. So, so that's kind of moved me to start to think about tailoring in terms of versus customizing. That thought process is really what begat my approach to working with clients. One of the things that I always thought that we had an advantage of was because we were not just a Johnny OneNote in terms of what services that we could that we could bring to that we could bring to the table. It got me thinking about what is somebody really trying to accomplish? And many of you on the call have heard me talk about this before. But with almost every client, I end up talking at some point, for some reason during the course of my work together, I always end up talking with them about the difference in, in the word drill bits comes into my storytelling. Just a quick show of hands. How many people already know where I'm going with when I say drill bits? Okay. So... Let's just, everybody knows what, uh, everybody knows what a drill bit is. Just a quick nod. Okay. Um, I, I'm seeing Mark's uh, profile picture, I think. Um, so let's assume last year that there was five and a half million quarter inch drill bits sold in the United States last year. It may surprise you to know that nobody wanted a quarter inch drill bit. What did they want? They wanted a hole, a quarter they, inch hole. They wanted a quarter inch hole. So when you think about that in terms of our business, if, if the wall behind me is actually um, not drywall, but let's assume for a moment that it is. And the 12 of us make the world's preeminent drill bit. We sell them for 50 bucks a piece. And there's a little old lady who wants to put a, a quarter inch hole in the wall behind me. Theoretically, she could take a quarter inch nail and go bang, 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 e -e 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 -e, 
and she's going to have her quarter inch hole and she didn't need our $50 drill bit to do it. So I start to think about whenever I'm engaged in any kind of potential client conversation, I'm always thinking in what is the hole that they're trying to buy? I'm not in the drill bit business. I'm in, the, I'm in the quarter inch hole business. I'm not in the quarter inch drill bit business. As a result of that, when I start to think about what are they really trying to do and with whom and how, I start to think of tailoring. Bundling is a piece of tailoring, but it's not exclusively tailoring. So when I start to think of tailoring, I'm thinking about, do I need to accomplish this whole? Do I need to do it in one-on-one -on -one sessions or do I need to do it as a group? Do I need to do it as a group plus one-on-one -on -one sessions? Do I need to do it live? Do I need to do it by video? Do I need to do it telephonically? Do I need a, some com combination of all day meetings, like the typical um, like boot camp um, kind of approach? Do I need to do it as back-to-back -back days, followed by several weeks off, followed by back-to-back -back days? Like if you were bringing a sales team together, you may not be in the old days, you couldn't fly everybody together once a week when you had people working remote. So that became part of the, the tailoring that I needed to do. So for me, it wasn't just a, well, here's the eight to 10 weeks and we do it in two hours and here's the syllabus. And all I'm going to do is, is use a cookbook to kind of try to do it. I really wanted to get inside the head of what's really going to be needed to be able to get that client the whole that they were hoping that I could provide for them. The, the, uh, what that led to was because we've, we've had the ability to add chapters and burn different CDs, if you will, in the old days, that I always thought about if somebody was really trying to get the ideal solution set from their perspective, what would they be hoping I could do? And so that allowed me to start thinking about all of the modules, if you will. And if I use the word milk crate to you, do you guys know what I'm talking about? If I'm talk, if I if I say milk crate, yeah, Emmy, Emmy, you you with me? I think so. <laughs> okay, because I want to make sure that I'm using an analogy that makes sense. So I, th I immediately think about all of the trusted advisors content modules and every one of the action plan sections, whether it's dream, the six life wheel areas, all of the various green tabs and all the various elements of the blue tabs, I just look at those as offerings. And so when I'm having a conversation with somebody, I'm imagining all of those things taken out of whatever magic notebook you happen to have on your bookshelves right now. And imagine you just had them in a milk crate in alphabetical order. All of them, all the modules on the front side, and all the action plan choices in the back half of the milk crate. And if you were building a the best offering that you could for that client, what modules would you put out? Would you pull out of the, the milk crate, number one? And what order would you put them in that's going to that's going to best match the culture? of the organization that you're working with. So for example, in some companies, I will absolutely bring in time before motivation. 
in other or in other organizations they need the motive they need to understand the human motivation piece way before we get involved in time so just because it was originally published in a certain order doesn't mean that that's the right order for the culture that i'm trying to work with so that's another form of of tailoring if you will in terms of the the time the frequency the, the makeups of the group, the learning styles or the learning methodology, those are all different types of tailoring that, that kind of goes through my head when I was doing this. One of the things that Wendy was kind enough to do in, in the old days was actually put together a, uh, and she and I, much to her dismay, <laughs> collaborated on this a gigantic spreadsheet that basically took all of the subheads of all of the content. And all of those subheads were basically all put in column A, if you will, of the spreadsheet. And across the top was the existing um, programs, if you will, whether we're talking about executive leadership, leadership management, supervision that then became team leadership, customer loyalty, sales, you name it. And there's little X's in each one of those boxes where that subject matter is talked about in that content. If that's not something that you know in your sleep, that would be something that I would highly suggest you have as a personal development takeaway from today because you can't sell what you don't know. It's really hard. Um, the other thing is I would encourage you to make sure that you have at least one copy of every program that, our, that Trusted Advisors produces, or at least work with Wendy to make sure, and Jenna, to make sure you have every module. You don't necessarily need a management action plan and a team leadership action plan because they're identical. But wonder if you said, coming out of today, I want to make sure that I have all of the modules because so that I can really know them, not just be familiar with them, not just read a descriptor about them. But for example, we have different things on teams in terms of building teams is treated differently in the executive leadership program than it is the team leadership program. Well, how do you know how do you know which, which is going to be the best fit? It's not just, oh, these guys are executives, so let me give you the team build, the, the building teams one. That may not be the best fit for that culture. So I, before, as I'm building these programs and my approach, I am literally sitting, grabbing the material, rereading it again, just to keep it the, the most fresh I possibly can and saying for this particular application, am I better off giving them this one or am I better off giving them this one? And it has no bearing on what program they came out of. It's, it's all about what's the deliver, what's the best deliverable for the client. The, um, when, when you start to think about that, the number of times that I've crossed, used materials from different um, materials uh, to be able to really benefit the client, I mean, one that immediately comes to mind is, is if you're dealing with an inside sales group, for example, in an organization, the amount of times that I've taken material from our sales process and our customer loyalty process and blended it has been unbelievable. The time, the, the amount of time that I've used customer loyalty and time management together as a blend. Again, it all depends on, on kind of what's the, what's the hole that somebody, that a customer is really trying to buy. Um, when it comes to dealing with middle managers or, 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 uh, team leader slash supervisory level, how much formalized training and development have they already had? If they're middle managers and haven't had any um, 
blocking and basic blocking and tackling, I am much more likely to use the core, more of the core material from team leadership and then adding those things that I know are going to be critical for a successful middle manager. If they've had a ton uh, if they're middle management group and they've had a ton of prior uh, training and development, I may use more of the leadership core because that's getting better results from us and not just getting better results from others and supplementing that with some of the higher end thinking from either the management program or quite candidly, bringing in some of the higher end thinking from executive leadership. Just because somebody is at the top of the house, while so many people would automatically um, kind of use the executive leadership because of who's in the room, so to speak, I, I think that's as dumb as a box of rocks because you're liable to absolutely overwhelm the person who's in that room if they're trying to go from zero to 75 miles an hour without the basic fundamentals behind them. So, so when I ask somebody to describe how much formalized management or sales development have they had, you know, in terms of the group that they're talking with, that is not just a, uh, that's not a light question. That's what I really need in my mind anyway, to be able to select what content is really going to be helpful. The other thing is from a timing and duration perspective, are they gonna give me people for 27 weeks? Well, probably not because they've got other major initiatives that they've got to get done this year. So then I have to be selective and say, well, what's the most important stuff? If I'm not gonna be able to give them everything from um, little hot dogs to finishing up with Grand Marnier at, at the dessert bar, what are those things that are really going to be critical that they're going to need to have a, a mastery of in order to understand what corporate goals they're trying to achieve this year? And so that also will then drive what content choices I make in terms of the, uh, in terms of what I'm going to include in terms of my, my offerings. The other thing that some of you have heard me talk about in the past, in the past is and this is certainly true of anybody that I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with, I want you to eliminate the word proposal from your vocabulary. And I only want you to think in terms of memo of understanding. Because a proposal to me means that I'm going to write something down and then I'm going to hope you buy it. I'm not willing to write proposals for things that, that I've got a very low probability of being able to, to uh get you to sign your name on the line that is dotted. So I only think of a memo of understanding, which means if I was having a conversation with Bertha, I might have a conversation with something and literally the tops of my memos or M MOUs have the word draft in it, literally in probably a 42 font in bold and red that says draft, draft, draft across, because I want it to be a talking point. And I'll say, you know, Bertha, when you and I were on, when we were talking before, there's a couple of different things that I just wasn't able to get to. And can, can, can we spend some time and can you kind of clarify, this is some of my initial thoughts, but, are there, but can we kind of go through this? And I want to make sure that you see every one of these is really valuable based on the group that you have in mind. And again, I'm kind of looking like I'm really looking for the dog in the back of the Chevy in terms of that old, uh, that old nodding little dog that used to sit there that I'm, I never, ever, ever want to think about making a sale. I only want to think about building a sale. And so as a result of that, the um, making sure that all that content, the, the person I'm talking with sees that as important and critical to their success. At the end of that, I always say, is there something that you were expecting me to include that you don't see? And is there anything that we've covered that in the whole scheme of things, you're really not sure that it's all that valuable? Because I always want you to perceive 
what we're doing is nothing but high value and it has, and I haven't had it any fluff along the way so that you're absolutely buying into the, the proposed content. So you're agreeing with it and that's really kind of where I'm building the, the memo of understanding. I use that exact technique when it comes to making sure that they understand what learning methodology are they, excuse me, are they comfortable with and I'm comfortable with in order to accomplish this. And so making sure that they're also in agreement of how the process is gonna be delivered. And that's everything from length of an individual session. I've had um, sessions in, in busy, busy, busy clients that that session was exactly an hour and 15 minutes and it was over a working lunch. And we had to do split sessions because they couldn't take everybody off the floor at the same time. And so in some cases we did rotating weeks. In some cases I'd be back there doing two sessions in a week, one group, you know, from 10 of 12 to five after one and another group, the other half of the group from, you know, 10 of 12 to five after one. I've done groups where one group followed the other in because they couldn't take everybody off the floor at the same time. I've had groups that said, um, you know, the first, of the, the first week of the month is crazy for us. So the implementation became the second, third and fourth week of the month, not the first. So, so when I think about tailoring, I think of bundling as a piece of the tailoring process um, but, but that's kind of the, the, the whole, the whole scheme of things. So Mr. Fritz, you're, Fritz, it's your, your, this, the floor is yours. I just have a question for you. Um, this is all very interesting and very hands-on and, and very user-friendly and the, and the idea of being, um, one-on-one -on -one with, with the people's thinking before you embark, I totally agree with. Would you feel comfortable using the term that you used before um, of building a sale rather than making a sale? Because to me, it's a positive thing to say. Um, would you feel comfortable using that language as you're developing the, uh, the relationship and, and moving towards a, a memo of understanding? I probably wouldn't say it out loud, but, but I want all of my behavior to telegraph that to you. Because even in my mind, Bob, to take it to take it one more click, I want you to see me as an assistant buyer. I don't want you to see me as a salesperson. So I want you to see me as a subject matter expert who's really trying to operate with your best interest in mind. And so I'm unless I'm talking to a VP of sales about a sales program, well, or unless a company company president about a sales program, I'm not typically going to telegraph. I'm going to telegraph that, but I'm not going to use that language. Okay. Thank you. Tomas. Doug, I want to go back to you, the very beginning. And you mentioned um, the word customization and the the connotations that it has for you. How much have you validated the, those connotations? Well, considering I'm always right, Tom, I never thought I had to do that. Well, no, because, no, well because I have uh, used that word, you got me looking, you know, internalizing going, oh, um, all right, before I go and change all my copywriting, how true is this connotation of the, you know, and actually I usually say, uh, custom tailored, you know. <laughs> Got it. I'm, I'm probably okay with custom tailored. I haven't validated it a lot other than when I first started in the business. I, I was, I was for whatever reason, because of the way the stars were aligning, I was following a lot of people that had just sold custom software to an organization. And the biggest bitch about it was it was highly expensive it was late and it didn't work. And so I guess I, you could say that I got snake bit by the reputation of, of uh, kind of where could that potentially take me? And so 
when I play around with language, the second half of that is when somebody goes, ooh, it's new. Yeah, that can be really exciting for people. But I always worry about somebody going, ooh, it's untested. Because both of those things could be true with new. But if I'm talking about, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna tailor resources, then what I'm trying to subtly convey is that you're not gonna go for a flyer if you do business with me. You're, we're not going to be inventing things at your expense. A lot of times I will purposely say to somebody, would it be helpful if I, if I, if, if I shared with you what we did for another company in a very, very similar situation? I've never had anybody say no to that. Sure. Because most people don't mind spending money on stuff as long as it's going to work. They're not interested in, unless they're incredibly desperate in spending money on stuff that's, that's untried and they're taking on all the risk. You know, Doug, at Fast Start, we got a list. Um, but at my Fast Start with you and Mike Sleppin, we, we got a list and I had it pinned on my wall for years of 12 power words, the primary power words. New was one, you, uh -huh. profit, but proven is another. And in this context, uh, you know, okay, if new, new um, seems unproven, then maybe we should use proven. Um, beyond that, not a power word per se, but as I was thinking about your, uh, about Bob's question about, you know, uh, build a sale. Um, I think what I have been known to say um, and I don't have, I didn't have the build the sale concept, but, um, but collaborative. I mean, you will find that when you work with me, this is collaborative and we, and, and, and we adjust as we go along if we need to. Yeah. So, you know, throwing, weaving the word collaborative, I think is a, a, a different way of saying we're going to build a sale because that implies that you want to make, that your goal is to make a sale as opposed to help. Uh-huh. Good catch, Tom. Go ahead, Nancy, take yourself off of mute. Thank you, Doug. I, I don't know why I just thought of this, and this is kind of funny, but it just popped into my head based on what Tom was saying and also what Bob said about using the words build a sale. But you know what? It, it sounds like what you're telling us is analogous, analogous to that build a bear model. If you've ever taken your kid to a build a bear workshop, right? You take all the pieces that each person likes and you come out with the personalized bear. So that's what you're telling us, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, and, and your bear could be different than Bertha's bear versus Emmy's bear. Yeah. That's what I love. See, that's why LMS is my friend. I realize that not everybody is, is doing much on as much as on LMS, but I love the LMS process because I can I can put in whatever ingredients in whatever order. And they're literally, you know, being able to get the best that I've got to offer. And I never have to use an excuse, well, well. We're not really going to cover this because then it's like, well, what else? What other? What other stuff have you put in there that we don't need either? And that, to me, starts to discount the value of our process. That's why when we when I moved away from paper and into electronic, I mean, granted, trusted advisors and the predecessor were, were always good. That if I didn't want content in there, they would take it out and and they would reprint the tabs for me and everything else, you know, to 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 give me what I was looking for. But that's the, that, that's the, that's the background in terms of the, the why. Doug, I just wanna say thank you because I'm taking, there's two takeaways. So first is modules. And I do have a content matrix from the previous organization. And I always had it stuffed in here. <laughs> and I'm going back over it. And I guess I have a question. Are there any updates to this now, uh, Wendy and Jenna? And I am going to make sure I have a refresher so that I'm familiar with it all. So thank you for that. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Bertha. Sure. Any other? Doug, I'm going to, um, 
I'm going to push back a little bit um, just for me. Um, you know, at the coaching academy, I learn to ask at the end of every session, and I do it through the process, you know, through a developmental process. And so, you know, what's your most significant takeaway from our discussion today? And I got to tell you, I'm surprised about 60 to 70 percent of the time of what they told me their takeaway was. They're discovering things in the material that I would not have expected them to, that things hit home for them that I could not have imagined. Now, maybe I just didn't ask enough questions, but, but I don't think so. It just, so I, I guess I would say, I would prefer to be careful and include because you never know what they're going to discover something that we never talked about that came in and, and they have their aha moments in places that I could not have predicted. Tom, part of that discussion, well, first of all, thank you, but part of that discussion happens when I'm building, when I'm building the content form. Um, I got to admit, having done this for 35 years, I've got a pretty good working knowledge of, of, of how I want to position these various modules. And so I don't, it's highly, highly, highly unusual for somebody to go, take that out. But, but for example, uh, if somebody had just done a time strategies course three weeks before they started to talk to me, and just because it's in the material, I put it in the outline, it, it's, it would potentially go, well, uh, I don't really, uh, we don't really Didn't need done that. Yeah. So again, I want to make sure that, that the perception of, of, what's in there is going to be perceived as high value um, for them. And you determine that with your questions up front. You'd get that specific to know where they're at. Yeah, I have. I usually have a pretty good sense of, 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 of things, you know, up to and including, tell me about who's going to be in the group. Well, I've got these five guys. Would, would you mind kind of me walking through kind of their names and what do you see their strong suits and kind of what make, give, talk, give, talk to me a little bit about kind of what makes them tick. And, and that's, that's regardless of whether I do a, this, this is all before the days of assessments, by the way, Bob. So I want to, if I've got a whole bunch of, of, of really hard charging guys, that would be the equivalent of, you know, 117 D, they, they may not be very open to anything that they consider as foo-foo stuff. So if I so if I want to, you know, get and keep credibility with the group, I have to think about being flexible enough to deliver what it is that we need to deliver in a way that they're going to accept. Because if they don't accept it, it doesn't matter how good I am. To be right. blunt. Okay. Uh, Doug, an I, observation uh, customizes to tailoring sort of as expenses are to investment, marketing <laughs> semantics. And, and I've changed from expenses to investment because of trusted advisor. So customizing is gonna, I guess, gonna have to move the tailoring. So, because I, I, I like that it's semantics, but boy, uh, it works with customers because marketing and selling are the similar thing. Uh, different, different comment modules. You're right on that because I do strategic planning, sales, and I did management. And one time I had an issue and I had someone that needed to deal with their decision-making process and um, they weren't good at dealing with performance reviews. And Gerard said, don't do management, do team leadership. So it was a lack of knowing those modules, which Bertha picked up and, uh, so Jenna just shipped for me. I, I have a new consulting, consult with home telecom for years. I have someone new and he's, the boss said, I want you to work on his decision making and problem solving. Boom, so they shipped an LMS chapter, that module on decision making and problem solving. That's simple and I'm gonna work with him this Friday on, on that one. We'll tell him to read it and go from there. So. I need a better understanding myself of the modules. I've seen that before with all the X's on it, Bertha. <laughs> I don't know where I put it. So, Wendy, you were going to say something. You still have that thing somewhere? 
Yeah. That, that all those graphs with the with the X's on them with all the modules. Actually, we didn't update it when we did the coaching and leadership 2.0 because we didn't have a lot of folks using it. Um, what you do have is the table of contents that also lists. Um, more folks use the table of contents that had the subheadings because they said the content matrix made their head spin. <laughs> <laughs> I <got> Sorry, it. <laughs> Doug. <laughs> The, the other thing that. is a lot of times just reach out to us and we can tell you the differences between the chapters because some of the chapters may have the same title, but the way it's written is different. And we can tell you what that is based upon the, the uh, chapter and what process it's from. Yeah, yeah, Gerard was great for that. So I guess I have to use him for my module master, but, um, but that, that's pretty good, okay. Great. I just thought I'd make those observations for you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Thanks for, for some of my new semantics. <laughs> You're, we are quite welcome. Anybody else have any, a comment or a thought? Just one more on what we were just talking let about. Me, Bob, I'll, let me go to Nancy. I saw her hand pop up, and, and then I'll, we'll come back to you. Thank you, Doug. Um, this is kind of a follow-on to an observation that Tom had. Have you found that when you're working with clients and you've very carefully gone through this process of what modules you're going to be coaching them on that perhaps something does percolate a different thought a different idea and that could lead to a follow-on coaching process that's in fact happened mm -hmm. um bob and then bertha and then charles yeah, this is easy. It gets back to that module that you have my attention with that. And I kind of like to see things visually that way. It helps me. So I'm wondering to Wendy, um, if we have the old module, is it in a um, an Excel spreadsheet that we can get it and then we can make the updates to it as the uh, chapters have changed? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I can say, yes, I can send you the old one. Also, if you go to the affiliate website, under your processes tab, you'll find the table of contents for all of the processes, as well as um, customized solutions. These are just miscellaneous, tailored, bundled options that affiliates have used in the past to give you some examples. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Uh, um, Bertha? Great segue, because I was going to say I found in preparation for today something called Sample Bundling Projects. It's actually called Howland Custom Projects. Um, so it gives you the reason for customization, the text, and then the action plan or workbook. That's very helpful to me. That's what I was talking about. Thanks, yeah. Bertha. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, uh, Charles. Yeah, Doug. I just want to reinforce the whole idea that um, Sorry, uh, uh, you have to know the product. And uh, in the case of leadership, I mean, it's all subtle around communication. And I did take a day and look at the differences between leadership, team leadership and management and executive management. And it's well worth your time. Uh, um, it really lets you uh, uh, understand how, how you can blend stuff. And, and it's, you just, I find, at least for myself, I just can't work off a table of contents. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have some sense of what what the content is. Uh, Charles, thank you. I'm going to reinforce that, and 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 I'm not I'm not a paid spokesperson for for trusted advisors here, but I may as well be. Even as little as a week or two ago, I literally brought out materials and opened them up. In front of me, and I and I reread that module, not for the content. Well, yes, for the content, but not for the content. But what was the style that that particular content was written in, and how would that resonate with the participants? So you can, because there's multiple communication chapters, or at least there are so far. Not all of them have the identical content, but not also have, a, are, they're not all written in the same style. They're close, but, it, but again, to me is, I don't wanna put a 44 long on a five-year-old, uh, five 
So I'm I'm really look I'm really reading that material versus does this make sense for this group of people that I'm about to work with, and 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 I just don't know any substitute for product knowledge. I just don't. Um, to me, it's just if we're going to be in that business, we better know what we're selling. Because my biggest fear for me is I don't sell what I don't understand. And if I don't understand it, I don't ask a whole lot of questions about it because, you know, I had a Latin teacher that said it's better to be thought a fool and keep your mouth shut than open your mouth and remove all doubt. Um, and so as a result of that, I have a tendency to, to only go into those areas that I feel comfortable having a conversation. My question is, if that's the way you're operating, potentially how many thousands of dollars could you be leaving on the table because you're not asking the questions that I'm asking that opens up pathways for doing business with people that you may be walking, but that you may be walking past. And, and that would be a shame if that happened. Nancy, go ahead. Uh, actually, your statement there leads me to my, I guess, next question. I, I love the idea of tailoring and I've sort of played around with it. My question is then, uh, when do you bring up the subject of pricing? Is it in that draft memo of understanding or is it added later? And then how do you price this? Remember the steps of the sale and that we had, that we had in the, uh, who are you, who's your company, Pri product and service, price and pricing mm -hmm. and time and timing from, this, from mm -hmm. the selling buying process chapter. Mm -hmm. I take all of those as part of the discovery process, not the presentation process. Because okay. if I understand that your budget is X and I design something that costs five times your budget, what's the likelihood that you're gonna say yes? Mm -hmm. So to me, the time and timing and price and pricing is just as much a, 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 you know, as part of that process. The other thing that I've often said to people on, that, on this whole thing about why I considered a, a memo of understanding and not a proposal if, if I was a, uh, the world's most mean boss, right? And, and I said to you guys, you guys all were my sales staff. And I said to you, and Charles, you're gonna know where this is going because you heard me say it to you. Um, by the way, if you ever lose a sale, you will lose a body part. It may be your pinky, it may be your big toe, it may be your right ear, but you will lose a body part. Have I made myself clear? Would you ever take a chance on not knowing what the duration was, not knowing what the ideal timing was going to be based on what else they had going on in the organization, not understanding what some of the cultural um, obstacles are that you probably need to take into consideration and what their tolerance for price as well as terms. I've had people that say, listen, I'd like to do business with you, but you know, what kind of terms can you offer? I said, well, as long as it's not a dollar a year for 17,000 years, we've got an opening point, let's talk. And they say, well, can we break it up into four? And for me, the answer is yeah, because I'm going to need money four months from now as much as I need money in the next 16 days. So I'd rather have a client that can give me additional referrals and add on work rather than going, nope, unless you pay me all up front, I'm not doing anything. I mean, it, it's a business model. It's just one that, I, that I've never, uh, um, that, that I haven't subscribed to for years and years and years. And I got to admit in 35 years, I haven't been burned very often with somebody owing me money. So the the risk the risk is pretty low. Um, I don't want to give up the ones that I could make by being hard to do business with. So, and you could say, well, yeah, do I take credit cards? Yeah, but I'll be honest with you, most people in if they're right now, if it's a corporate, if I'm dealing doing business with a corporation, they tend to not do much on credit cards. It tends to be give us an invoice and we'll pay you a check. And you know, it, you know, they set it up as a either I I invoice them on a regular basis or they set it up as a recurring payment. In some cases, it goes right from their bank account 
electronically right into mine and it's a no tough touch uh, situation, but I try to make it, what I try to determine is, do I want to do business with them and do they want to do business with me? And if that, if that question is a yes, I try to not let any details get in the way. That's just, but that's been kind of my operating style for many years. So Nancy, I hope that's a, I hope that's a real answer for you and not a non-answer. It reminded me that it's okay to have multiple discussions. The first discussion around the draft memorandum of understanding based on what the, the process would entail. And then after that's finalized is what you're saying. Then comes a discussion about price. Well, the other, thing, the other thing is if I'm talking with somebody at the top of the house, mm -hmm. typically there's no such thing as a budget because if they want it, if they really want what we do, they typically mm -hmm. call their top team together, say, find the money, meeting's over when we start in two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. the people that typically end up in the budget fiasco are the guys that are, that you're talking to that are typically in the middle, you know, because they don't have the power, they don't have the power to say yes without checking with them. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a variable, you know, that, uh, that with any luck, you could have worked around. Mm -hmm. Doug, Thank can you. I pop in with a question? This is Heather. Sure. Hey, I'm wondering, you know, I'm sure for mid-sized to larger organizations, you know, there's always a budget and money can always be moved and, and things, but sometimes for those smaller to mid-sized businesses, um, at least we find that, you know, business owners have trouble even understanding a ballpark of what our services could be and asking for a budget, you know, not even knowing where to begin to wait mm -hmm. and, and thinking about that. Yep. Any, any wisdom or thoughts to how what we're talking about here applies to those types of folks? Sure. I typically, I typically ask if they've ever done anything like this, this, these kinds of things in the past, just to try to get some kind of a level set. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's not, if the answer is no, I try to get a, some kind of a sense of where will sticker shock uh, kick in. Um, like, like, for example, if we've been having a conversation and I understand that this is going to involve either multiple people or multiple weeks, and it's going to be pretty involved. If I believe that dollars could enter into it, I might say, Heather, would, would, would it be helpful if I just kind of share an order of magnitude of based on what we've talked about so far, kind of, kind of a range that this might run? And if you go, yeah, and I say, well, we're, we're probably looking at order of magnitude six or 7,000 bucks. If you go, if you clutch your pearls and say, oh my God, does that come with a car? Then, then I know I've really got to rethink the, uh, re rethink the conversation or what I'm, gonna, what I'm going to do if I'm still going to be able to do business with you. But I do not want to be in the business of writing proposals, so to speak, that are not going to be accepted. And... If you said, well, I can't do that, but I, I might be able to do three, then I'd say, well, let me, let me, let me, let me see what I can structure you, you structure for you for, for three grand. Mm -hmm. and that's when my understanding of what are the really critical issues that we've talked about, so that I really am giving you the the best offering to, to that's gonna make as, as much progress as humanly possible you know, for the, for the money that you can afford. Because again, I got involved in this business back in June of 85 to help people not just be the richest guy in the cemetery. So, you know, that's, so that's kind of, that kind of colors how I, how I approach that conversation. Is that helpful, Heather? It is. Thank you very much. Question, Doug. Um, on, I never talk about price either. It's all about investment. But an issue, and I mean, it's really a question to you, is I always say, well, there's of course the monetary thing, right? As we all know. But really the biggest investment you have to make is your time, right? In this, you know, and, and I very often, well, money is always an issue, of course, let's not, <laughs> no matter what we call it, right? No, it could very often be, or no matter who we talk to, but, uh, but, but 
how do you deal with that issue actually getting the top person or whoever is the sponsor of this, you know, the one to look up to, to understand, no, 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 it's not just hiring me and then you disappear, right? Uh, you know, no, I mean, because sometimes, oh yeah, now you take them from here. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I take you with us, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's funny you should mention that, Abby, because that's one of the, one of my ground rules is that I want people from the top of the house participating. Yeah. Some of the worst disasters I ever had was, was with a bank where I worked with everybody in the middle, but none of the people from the top of the house. Yeah, so. And I, they, were, they asked me to do all kinds of wonderful development with them and get them to think more innovatively and all this kind of stuff. And every time I turned around, the guys in the middle would say, well, we'd love to do this, except every time we go to do something new, the message that comes down from our bosses is that's not the way we do things yeah. around here. And meanwhile, every time I try to drive something down into the bow, the the you know the, with the folks that are reporting to me, they have it. They haven't been through the process yet, so I'm getting tremendous resistance from them. That's part of the reason why I always want to drive this from yeah. the top down and not from the bottom up. Yeah, <laughs> To me, that's the biggest issue. That, I well, mean, not, money is, of course, let's not. Well, that. And Abby, that's why I think an error that I suspect a lot of people in our network make is not getting to the person or people at the top of the house. And so because it's easier for me to people to meet people in the middle versus the top, they settle for, well, it's probably better starting somewhere than no place. Your experience may be different than mine. I absolutely suck when it comes to trying to sell up in an organization. Mm -hmm. There are way too many uh, political landmines okay. um, in terms of what people in the middle think they know about what's going on in the top of the organization. And the honest to God truth is they don't, but they think they do. And so they'll feed us all kinds of information, well-intended, I'm not even talking about you know any kind of malice here. They'll give us all kinds of information that they believe is true. And my experience is that when I finally do get to talk to people at the top of the house, it's like, where did this come from? Yeah. You know, and, and now all of a sudden I'm walking stuff back and it's like self-inflicted gunshot wounds. That's the old question. Are you make sure or are you talking to the right person? Okay. And going from Below to our pit. My experience is that's impossible. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Then you know we'll on to the next company. The, the other thing when it comes to just what we were talking about there as well, that just because uh, I am watching the time a little bit. When I talk about building a sale, um, one of the things you've heard, you, most of you guys have heard me talk about Bob Becker and my experience with Bob over the years. One of the things that he always taught me was when you're working in a larger organization, particular, Bob's style was always talking to whoever the top of the house was saying, when you're considering doing something new, who do you like to kick around ideas with? And then I would say on my nickel, would you mind if I have a short conversation with them, even if it's only 15 or 20 minutes, but I'd really like to get their perspective on what you and I've talked about today. When I have that conversation, I listen and write like a banshee because I wanna make sure that I'm taking those nuggets and putting it back in whatever document I'm gonna to send to the person at the top of the house, knowing full well that that document is going to be shared with the people that he likes or she likes to kick ideas around with. And I want you to be able to see your suggestions to me. I want you guys to be able to see your fingerprints in that document as much as I possibly can. I mean, every once in a while, you'll get some conflicting information. But that to me is really one of the critical issues. And now it's another way of building the sale and not just making the sale. I call that building a relationship, okay? <laughs> Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. 
So, Mr. Bryan, I'm assuming you're still with us someplace. I am, Doug. Penny for you, Penny for your thoughts in three at three fifty six. The I only have one comment, and that's when you're dealing with somebody in the middle. They might be able to make the introduction to the one at the top, and I've had that happen a couple of times. I would doubt whether or not they were really in that well with the person, but they're able to make the introduction, and I was at the top. So they do have a place. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to argue that. Thanks for that clarification, Mark. Jenna, before I turn it over to Wendy, I'm giving you a chance to put a word in edgewise. Because I'm an equal opportunity harasser. Everybody's got to talk on my calls. Well, I appreciate it. I don't really have a word to put in. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Wendy, I turn it back over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Doug, for sharing uh, some information on tailoring and bundling your processes. If anybody has any questions, I'm sure Doug wouldn't mind taking a call. You can reach out to myself, Tammy Gerard. We can help you with the whole bundling conversation as well. So with that, I wish everyone a great rest of the day. Thanks, Doug. Hit them long and straight, everybody.